Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Alex Lara. I'm a urologist at the University of, of Toronto, a, uh, working at Mount Sinai Hospital and Princess Margaret Cancer Center. So first of all, I would like to, to say and to mention that um, actually this very large multi-institutional collaboration between Toronto Mass General and, and Harvard Medical School and uh, USC Los Angeles will be actually published very soon in the prestigious Lancet Oncology. What we've done is in muscle invasive blood cancer where the classical treatment, the gold standard has been a fairly aggressive surgery that we all know, which is radical cystectomy. We have seen a move since some decades towards bladder preservation, where the specific patients who have tumors which are unifocal, less than seven sounding ears, without multifocal carcinoma in situ, patients have been treated with trimodality, trimodality because it combines the resection by TRDT of the tumor and then giving a combination of chemotherapy to sensitize the radiotherapy, which is delivered specifically where the tumor was resected and at the lower dose in the surrounding tissue of the blood. The problem is that although TMT has been part of many guidelines, it has never really been compared to radical cystectomy. There have been randomized studies that randomly allocated patients between cystectomy and trimodality, but unfortunately, all these studies stopped and didn't accrue based probably because of patients and physician preferences. Patients just didn't want to choose between those two options. And therefore, we were left without any big studies comparing the two. And this is why we undertook a large study that compared cystectomy and trimodality therapy in different centers to increase the generalizability of the findings. And in a match cohort of over 1,100 patients, we use two very well-known statistical methods when randomized studies are not available. One is propensity score matching, and the other one is inverse treatment weighting probabilities. And we use two different statisticians who worked independently and then merged the data. And what the study showed was that using the primary endpoint that was metastatic free survival, using secondary endpoint that were cancer specific survival, disease free survival, and overall survival, we showed that the outcomes of trimodality and radical cystectomy at five years in terms of metastatic free survival, cancer-specific survival, and disease-specific survival were exactly the same between the two arms. And that the thing to, to mention again is that we we're talking about a subset of patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, not all the uh, all the all the the, uh, the patients is about twenty nine to thirty percent of people would have been eligible. They were treated by the group of Mass General uh, with Dr. Jason Estatu, who is the uh, co first author with me of this large trial by trimodality, operated at, in Toronto or operated in Los Angeles by uh, Zia Danishman, another really well known uh, surgical specialist of bladder cancer. And so the primary endpoints and secondary endpoints were the same between the two treatment arms. However, this one caveat is that in the people who were treated with trimodality, this requires a lifelong follow-up because about 10 to 13% of patients will ultimately present with a recurrence inside the bladder that requires a cystectomy. And that when we say that the overall survival were the same, the overall survival is slightly better actually with TNT, but when we say that the metastatic free survival, the cancer free survival were the same, this is an intent to treat about 10 to 13% of patients 
that are initially treated with the preservation of the bladder ultimately will recur and will have their bladder removed. And another 30% of patients are at risk of having a non-mass invasive recurrence that will require additional treatment. So yes, this study shows that nowadays it's the strongest evidence and the most robust to date supporting that patients with specific criteria should be offered both bladder preservation or cystectomy, and that bladder preservation trimodality should not be reserved only to patients who are not candidate, but patients have to be aware that they need stringent and diligent lifelong follow-up, and that they are at risk of having a recurrence which is non muscle invasive or even recurrence muscle invasive, which ultimately will lead to cystectomy. And that's really the main, main message of this very important uh, paper probably. Trimodality therapy uh, has been studied in patients with variants and actually urothelial carcinoma variant can be equally treated with trimodality therapy. What we haven't used here is pure variants. So pure squamous, for instance, was not treated with trimodality. Then the second question is with respect to carcinoma in situ. When patients have multifocal carcinoma in situ, this is a surrogate for instability, genetic instability at the level of the bladder. And we usually tend not to offer TMT to those patients. I mean, my colleagues, a radiation oncologist here uh, in Toronto, Peter Chang or Ali Berlin or Srini Raman, because the risk of a recurrence is much, much, much higher. And so when the tumor had a little bit of carcinoma in situ at the vicinity of the tumor, they were eligible. When they were multifocal, we usually refrain from, uh, from proposing TMT in those patients. The best candidates are, at the present time, patients with tumors less than seven centimeter. This is what we call the RTOG criteria. It's five centimeter in the RTOG. Patients who have, if they have hydronephrosis, have moderate and unilateral hydronephrosis, and patients with clinical T2 to T4, but usually T3 uh, tumors. In our series, 90% of tumors were clinical T2, but we know that there's always a disconnect between clinical and pathological. And one of the strengths of the study was the fact that even in the cystectomy series with a cancer-specific survival north of 80%, 26% had actually node-positive disease, 44% had PT3 disease, and still we achieved results with cystectomy that were, as I said, north of 80%, which means that the equivalence between TMT and our radical cystectomy was by no means because the radical cystectomy series was underperforming. On the contrast, it's probably at the upper level. It's simply because we probably chose the best candidates, as I just explained. I think the next frontier in the future will be to find the sweet spot. Is it that we can safely treat patients who are with more tumor than only one, maybe larger, can we extend a little bit the inclusion criteria? There's a lot of work ongoing there, and I think that's going to be the, as I said, the next frontier and the next studies. When a patient comes in, has a tumor which is assessed as a clinical T2, pathologically resected T2, and the tumor is less, as I said, of three inches, seven centimeter, as, as you mentioned, the EAU guidelines recommend that you can do TMT. Now, the reality on the ground is that very often, if you proceed with cystectomy in those patients, you're going to have an upstaging. And that means that we have to accept that there's going to be a disconnect between what we call P PT2 and CT2. 90% of our patient population here was clinical T2. And so it's right that our results are fitting this EAU definition, 
Now we still had 10% of clinical T3 and T4. And when you basically added those T4 into the equation compared to cystectomy, results didn't change. And so, as I mentioned, um, we will need to have additional fine tuning about the best candidates. We used about 60% in both arms of neoadjuvant or adjuvant chemotherapy, both cystectomy and TMT. We don't know exactly the, the place of neoadjuvant in TMT is a little bit less defined than in radical cystectomy. So I think it's a moving field. I completely appreciate where the guidelines come from because again, 90% of our patients were fitting those criteria, but I think there's room for expanding safely uh, the inclusion criteria and next studies should focus on these patients and address the, this, this gap.